Here's a live look outside the Brooklyn Center Police Department where hundreds have gathered once again after a former officer shot and killed Dante Wright. Within the last hour, law enforcement there started ordering protesters to leave after they say some started throwing objects at officers. Thanks for watching WCCO and CBSM Minnesota. Here's the latest tonight. A curfew just went into effect in Brooklyn Center at 10. Former officer Kim Potter posted bond and got out of jail tonight. BCA agents arrested her today and prosecutors charged with manslaughter in the death of Dante Wright. WCCO's Jeff Wagner is following tonight's unrest. He is in Brooklyn Center tonight and he joins us now. Jeff, how is it out there? It's pretty much a standoff, Amelia, the kind that we've seen the previous nights where you have your front line of protesters with their homemade shields and umbrellas right up against the fence with law enforcement on the other side. You mentioned reports of people throwing things at officers. I can tell you we have seen that over and over again, whether they be water bottles or rocks being thrown over the fence. And it's usually followed by a volley of sorts of those pepper balls uh, being shot at the protesters. Also, just the mace cans being sprayed directly into the crowd. But that's why the people in the front line have those umbrellas as a form of a shield from that, that uh, pepper spray and mace uh, that law enforcement are using. I'd say there's about you know several hundred, a couple hundred people out here, but over the past hour, we have seen people start to go home, knowing that the curfew was about to begin. At the same time, we have seen people just now arriving to this location. Uh, so again, a repeat of what we've seen in the previous nights, albeit without the rain, without the snow, and maybe it's a little bit warmer, uh, but the tensions remain. Several hours earlier, it was a bit more peaceful, however, still an emotional evening for many. For the fourth consecutive evening. These are my people, and right now we're just hurting right now. The intersection outside the Brooklyn Center Police Department became the epicenter of calls for justice over the deadly police shooting of Dante Wright. At 5 p.m. Wednesday, a few hundred people gathered to share their message as National Guard troops watched from the other side of barriers. We really want to see change. We want to feel it in our soul, in our gut soul, where they don't have to verbally tell us or the news don't have to come and tell us that this has happened. As a black community right now, we want to, we want to feel it in our gut. Some feel some justice has begun, with the officer who killed Wright now facing a manslaughter charge. But others feel she got off easy, starting with her being able to step down from her job. The letter said it was some mistakes. Everyone made mistakes, but fine, but they, we need her to be fired. Uh, they do need her to be fired, not, not resign. They don't need resignation. Halfway through the protest, Hennepin County Sheriff's deputies arrived agitating some protesters. A potential clash is why some nonprofits, like We Push for Peace, is back here again. We was kind of in the back of the front line protesters because that's where the water bottles and the bricks and stuff is being thrown. So that's what we're trying to prevent from happening. As community groups continued to feed neighbors and those attending the rally, the mood near the police station began to grow hostile. The potential for another night of unrest lingered in the air, with curfew just a few hours away. Again, you know, we don't have to tear stuff up in order for our voices to be heard. Well, things that may not have been torn up this evening in terms of the looting we saw in previous nights. Again, the standoff with police continues. You're getting a look at a homemade shield of sorts uh, from a wood pallet. That wood pallet, there are several of them in this front line up against the fence, along with the umbrellas and other makeshift shields. Now, as we've been out here, uh, we've, we're understanding that there is a large law enforcement presence south of the police station along Humboldt. Uh, over the past nights, we've seen it where it appears as though there isn't much law enforcement and they come out of nowhere and circle the crowds in different directions to try and, and trap some of the protesters that are out past curfew or, you know, committing different types of uh, violence or different dangerous acts. So as we've been out here, we have yet to hear a dispersal order since curfew started. We heard it uh, starting around 845 to 930 a few times, but unlike the previous nights, there hasn't been that megaphone order telling people they need to go because curfew has started. Oh, that's one of those flashbangs going off. Um, we're going to start backing up a little bit here uh, in anticipation of what might begin. That's the second flashbang we've heard in the past 10 minutes. The crowd beginning to grow more agitated. Uh, as you can see behind me, we're, we're moving ourselves back a little bit. Now we're starting to hear that megaphone. I can't exactly make out the message. 
I imagine it's something related to dispersal and people being out past curfew. But we'll, of course, continue to bring you the latest updates on what unfolds here with, I imagine, and anticipate a lot to happen probably in the next half an hour or so. Yeah. All right. Well, be careful out there, Jeff. Thank yeah. you. We got live to Brooklyn Center. What's going on, David Schumann? Hey guys, so we're a little ways away from the police department, but we want to show you what we see here. This is a very long line of National Guard vehicles. They have been stationary for at least half an hour since we've been here, but just a moment ago, they started inching up slowly toward the police department. Uh, and you can see here at the rear now, these buses are moving. And we know last night that uh, when arrests were made, people were rounded up and put onto buses. So that's possibly what they have these buses here for now. Um, there are a few people here around us. Like I said, we're, we're not close to the police department. It's at least a quarter mile, maybe further. But the few people that are around here, I've asked them, what is your plan to do with the curfew? Do you plan to stay out? And it's actually been very mixed. Some people said, oh yeah, I'm definitely going home for the curfew. Others have said, no way, I'm staying out. And then there were others who were just like, we just want to be out here for the show. I don't know what show they're looking for or what's going to happen down here, but it looks like now, especially now that we're past curfew, this line of vehicles is starting to move forward slowly. You can see that they are inching forward. Uh, it, it sounds like a par uh, the protesters who are out here, one of them said to me, it looks like and sounds like a parade almost that they're at. Um, so we're going to be out here to see what happens as these vehicles continue to move. Uh, and we'll, we'll get back to you if, if, we hear anything. So we're going to go to Jeff Wagner now, who's a little closer to the police department with what just happened moments ago. Yeah, good evening, guys. We heard a lot of silence since we last saw you just a few minutes ago. Uh, mind you, we are past curfew. And given what we had seen the previous nights and how law enforcement showed up and encircled the different groups, uh, and given where we were standing, we decided to get out of that location right in front of the police department and move north just past the pump and munch gas station for reference. Uh, that's kind of been the cutoff point, uh, this intersection up here where law enforcement wants to create their own perimeter, uh, not just from the police station, but further up north on Humboldt Avenue. So that's where we are, north of the police station. And over my shoulder, you can see there's suddenly a much larger police presence than there was earlier. I can tell you, we walked around this gas station around 9.15, 9.30, and maybe saw one or two squad cars. Things have significantly changed. We talked a little bit after 10 o'clock about that large law enforcement presence that was south of the police station. Uh, we believe that is what we're also seeing here north of the police station and circling uh, the group of protesters that were there. Many media, including ourselves, decided to get out of that area once we heard the sirens start to flare up. And so I have to imagine this is part of the law enforcement's plan to sort of nip this protest in the bud quite quickly, as opposed to some of the tactics we had seen previous nights where there were lines of law enforcement slowly pushing the crowd further and further back. Instead of pushing the crowd in any direction, uh, it appears they've encircled the crowd uh, from one block to the end of the other. And that's kind of what we're seeing behind us. I don't have eyes on the police station right now, but I can tell you the law enforcement presence that is suddenly here uh, has increased, and I have to believe that was part of their plan. All right, Jeff, thank you uh, for the update. We can tell you with, with, with some folks that we do have near the police station that uh, they've now issued at least their fourth order to disperse, which they've done to the crowd. Yeah. And obviously between what we see between Jeff and David, there, there are a number of law enforcement officers on the move. So. We're going to go back to Brooklyn Center where a curfew was just put into effect 25 minutes ago. David Schumann uh, is there. And tell us now, David, is anything going on? So you remember when we talked a few minutes ago, we were standing right next to this whole convoy of National Guard vehicles. Well, since then, they've moved out. They've driven way up there toward the police department. Uh, they were leading, there were all the Humvees leading the two buses with bars on the windows, the two large buses, which we know people who were arrested last night were rounded up into buses. At the back of the convoy was a sheriff's mobile command unit. But as you can see, they're pretty far away from us now. They were, even before when the uh, convoy was right next to us, they were letting vehicles out as if they were trying to leave to go home for curfew. There are still a few handful of people around us. There's a gas station across the street that people are coming in and out of. It doesn't really look like the curfew is being enforced in the same way in these 
outlying areas, so to speak, from the police department. It really looks like all the law enforcement focus is headed that way toward the police department. Um, so we're going to go to Brooklyn Center right now where there was a curfew that went into effect at 10 o'clock. Jeff Wagner is there. And I understand, uh, Jeff, that our police making arrests right now. It's hard for us to tell at this point. It was just about five to ten minutes ago that we started to hear those dispersal orders that I believe a lot of the media was able to heed those warnings and get out of that area so we didn't get sort of corralled in. But I believe that is what's going to be happening very soon. We just don't have eyes on the police station. Uh, looking behind me right now, you see a law enforcement contingent. We're north of the police station about a block or so. Uh, and this is that perimeter we've seen them set up over the past couple of days where they pretty much stopped from that point and to get people to leave the area, get people to disperse uh, about a block north and a block south. This is the gas station where we've seen people get arrested uh, as police were pushing their line forward. Uh, not tonight, I, I should say, in previous evenings we have seen that. Since we've been at this gas station, all we've been able to see from our vantage point uh, is multiple different law enforcement agencies. We've seen those different buses of sorts that could potentially be there to put some of those arrested individuals in, uh, but we haven't actively seen if anyone has been arrested and placed in them yet. Uh, from where we are, it's also difficult to hear if those dispersal orders have continued. I can tell you at about 9.45 to 10 o'clock, uh, you couldn't tell if anything was going to be happening between the law enforcement in terms of arresting people. All we saw was this described by some as a cat and mouse game of the people in the front line uh, of the protesters right up against the fence by the police station with their makeshift shields out of umbrellas, wood pallets, uh, trash cans. Uh, and then some people from behind would be throwing things over the fence and police would respond with pepper balls, uh, flashbangs started around 10 o'clock as, as those dispersal orders followed as well. Uh, it's, it's hard to tell though exactly what is happening from, from our vantage point. Jeff, I know that Tom Avilas, one of our photographers, he's along the gate right there and he says that things appear to be pretty calm and uh, police appear to be arresting people. And, uh, Operation Safety Net is saying that they are making arrests right now too. So uh, it, it doesn't seem as loud as, as it has been in the yeah, past we, several we did nights. Just run into Tom. What do you say? We did just see Tom uh, a few minutes ago. We, we were able to get out of there before he did and he said that the law enforcement were trying to get the media that were still there to disperse. As he was leaving, he said, as, as you had already mentioned, Amelia, it appeared that officers were starting to arrest people, but he did not describe some sort of chaotic scene. Uh, when those sirens kicked up around 10.05 to 10.10, 10, uh, and you could just, you, you felt this presence suddenly happening. I, I know in previous nights, there were reports of feeling like law enforcement came out of nowhere, came around different corners. So I feel as though whether it be media or people who were here previous evenings uh, just felt that potentially occurring again and got the heck out of there. Uh, and so that's what we're witnessing now uh, in terms of law enforcement setting up their perimeter to potentially corral in those protesters to arrest. Uh, in terms of what we would be hearing, uh, I, I know it was maybe just a couple hundred people that were still there in front of the police station uh, just after 10 o'clock. Uh, how, how many, Jeff? Because we're trying, you know, we, we've got a helicopter above you getting some, some shots, and then we see a couple different camera angles as well. So what, what were you, were there still a couple hundred folks there when you walked away? I, I would say, you know, 200 maximum. The, the crowd size was dwindling a little bit uh, compared to maybe 7, 8 o'clock. But at the same time, the crowd that was there, didn't appear that they were trying to go anywhere anytime soon. Um, they were hunkering down for the long haul, however long that may be, which appears to be uh, just under an hour past curfew of still being able to be in front of the police station. At this point. And I know that before the, the curfew that there are at least several orders to disperse for the crowds to disperse. And I understand and you talked about it too, that the protesters were throwing items at officers, but yet they hadn't made, it, made any moves at that point no and it was even though there were people right up against the fence it's not as though law enforcement were forcing them to back off the fence it's as almost they were staring each other face to face with the protesters holding their umbrellas uh from what i understand the umbrella would be to shield from the spray cans of pepper spray 
But then I was also told as a shield from the pepper balls, it was not working. Those were going right through and, and hitting the protesters. Uh, it, it's hard to say specifically if a bottle was thrown and then it was followed directly by the, uh, the pepper spray and the pepper balls. But we were just hearing them pretty regularly pick up from the law enforcement and probably a little after 9.15, 9.30, that's when it was just this slow, combative uh, standoff, if you will, uh, without the type of, I guess, moves by law enforcement we saw in previous nights where we had lines of state patrol pushing people back and back. Uh, we didn't have a chance to see that happening just yet uh, because, of course, we left the area and they've maybe used this tactic that has worked in the previous night to just completely surround the block versus getting people to leave the block. Right. And this is, you know, in a way similar to what they did last night, although last night it seemed to happen much, much quicker. I'm not sure, Jeff, who's in charge tonight or if you know, we know last night it was the Hennepin County Sheriff that was in charge because now you have this big collaborative network under this concept of Operation Safety Net where different people have have command and control over different evenings and moving personnel around. But as we look at the chopper shot, I mean, we can tell there's a ton of police, law enforcement, and National Guard vehicles amassed on Humboldt. There's some uh, a few blocks to the east of that, you know, almost forming what David Schumann said earlier as, as a bit of a, a barricade or encircling these folks. So uh, I don't know if you know who's in charge, uh, but we know there's been several dispersal orders, and, and it seems like if they follow the same play as they have the last couple nights, at some point here, since we're coming up on 20 minutes to 11, Frank, can, they take action. I Frank, I can tell you from what I saw earlier today, uh, right around five o'clock, the first presence we saw of any form of not even exactly law enforcement was the National Guard in front of the building. Then at about six o'clock, uh, kind of out of nowhere, or maybe because that's when their shift was starting, suddenly there was a lot of uh, deputies with the Hennepin County Sheriff's Office in their full riot gear appearing in front of the police station around six o'clock, which slightly agitated the crowd because at that point the protesters we're doing nothing more than taking turns speaking on a microphone, chants, playing music. There wasn't anything being really thrown over the fencing. Um, but once the Hennepin County Sheriff's Office showed up, you could feel like a little bit of tension starting to grow, as though the law enforcement side was preparing for what's to come eventually. Uh, the previous nights, I know Monday night especially, from what I was watching, it was a lot of state patrol. Uh, Minnesota DNR, so that state law enforcement presence. Definitely tonight, I've seen more of a Hennepin County Sheriff's Office presence to say that they're the ones in charge of this whole operation. I'm not exactly sure, but they are the law enforcement that I have noticed more tonight versus uh, previous evenings. All right, uh, stay close by. We appreciate it, Jeff. Yeah, thank you, Jeff. We're going to go to David Schumann right now because we spoke to him earlier, but he's trying to move a little closer to see what is going on. And David, uh, were you able to find out what is happening? Yeah, there's a man being arrested right in front of us right now. There's dozens of officers right in this area, and they just ran out. People are standing around, and they, they were not moving for a very long time, and then all of a sudden there was this burst of action, and they have a man in handcuffs. Now more are coming forward. They're creating their perimeter around us. They're advancing slowly. But there really are no protesters here. There's just mostly press. Someone mentioned to me that they have arrested someone with the press. But it looks like that they're advancing. I think we lost David. We did, but we yeah. can go ahead and, and uh, stay with this picture if we can go ahead and, and, and stay with that. Here's the helicopter shot where you can see law enforcement officers on the move as well. It's interesting if you go to the Operation Safety Net website, they, they actually have a list of what they would encourage you to do and, and then they have a list of unlawful activity and under unlawful, they throwing objects, setting a fire of any kind, damaging property, graffiti, illegal fireworks, uh, displaying weapons, obviously using weapons, uh, reckless driving, and um, they, they have a huge list. Dave, are you back with us? Okay, so here's the shot from David's camera. Uh, yeah, we'll, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, yes, we hear we you can. Now. Hey. Yeah, so the state troopers are here in tight formation and they keep advancing. They weren't moving for a long time. And I'm holding up. Go to the south side of the lane here. They're asking members of the media 
to, to move to the south side of the street, so we're gonna cross over here. I honestly do not even see any protesters. It looks to be all press, as well as a couple people that live in the apartment buildings are standing out in the front end. David, I, I know it's pretty loud there. I don't know if you can hear us. Where are you in relation to the police department or at, where's the police department in relation to where you are? So the police department is directly behind this whole line of troopers. Uh, they are expanding outward from the police department as, like I said, every 30 seconds or 60 seconds or so, they advance and move toward us and we're all backing up. It's a little hard to hear you, David. I, I think he was saying with the chopper going on above him right there, I was drowning out what he was saying. He was saying the police department is beyond, yeah, behind where those police protesting. officers are. Right, if you like, and if you were look towards the, the rear of your television for lack of a, a, a much better explainer. Hey, David, do we have any idea what happened to the 100 or two or 300 folks that were in front of the police department? People in front of the police department? Do we know? I haven't seen people in front of the police they, they disperse. Okay. When, they disperse. When the perimeter grows like this and the police fan out, it's hard for the protesters to stay in one singular group. Uh, we saw it the other night that they, everybody just gets spread out and, I don't know, goes home or, or whatever. But um, right now, I don't see any single protesters, anyone who was in front of the police department. We came from the back side, and uh, now we're here, like I said, with a group of press. The liberation of uh, this law enforcement operation. They're talking to us right now. We may be moving through here. We'll allow you to stay there. That's perfect. The state trooper is saying that he's allowing us to stay here. They might move past us to expand their perimeter, but we are allowed to stay here on the sidewalk. We're still assessing the situation. He says they're still assessing the situation. By better feel for the story that you did earlier tonight when you talked to those kids yeah I cut off David he said they're going car by car uh, looking for people state patrol state troopers all the law enforcement here will probably advance past us And this is a shot from our chopper right there from uh, Sky 4. And as you can see, a lineup of uh, police vehicles, security vehicles, National Guard there, I think, as Jeff and David both were telling us, they thought it, they were surrounding that area there, the Brooklyn Center Police Department, and that they were planning on maybe to go in if the protesters were still hanging about and to start making arrests. You know, if you've been up to Brooklyn Center, you know that police department is really in close proximity to a lot of apartment buildings and, and, and homes as well, like most are. And, and I was referencing, you know, David did that story earlier about what it's like to live there and the kids that are there. But his live shot, you got such a sense and flavor out if you think about the, you know, 1045 at night, flashbangs in your neighborhood, the helicopter overhead. Um, that's got to be so disruptive uh, to, to, to folks who are living oh, yeah, there. We heard from parents with your kids who are scared and tear gas wafting into their homes. And uh, and I know that they, they did ask the people, they said that it's fine and we encourage you to be peaceful. This is to the protesters. I know that they were saying this earlier, but it's not tolerated to any sort of criminal activity, which means destroying property or throwing objects and making it unsafe. So. I know that they made that announcement several times. Yeah, and, 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 and the protesters and, know that. And not only do they they, they announce it, they, you know, they tweet it, they publish it. Um, so you, uh, but you know, emotions are high, as we saw uh, back in May, and, and folks are going to make their own personal decisions to 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 do uh, whatever they choose. Uh, David, are you back with us? There's dozens of them, literally packed shoulder to shoulder across the street and into the yard. 
So all the law enforcement here, there's dozens of them. They're packed in shoulder to shoulder, crossing from the yard of the apartment building all the way across the street onto this side. And every couple minutes, well, more frequently than every couple minutes actually, they have been advancing, advancing, pushing us back. We are only standing here with this small group. You can see all the cameras, small group of media. They've given us this space on the sidewalk to stay. And they've told us, you can stay here. We might advance past you, but don't move from where you are. I've not seen any protesters who were out front of the police department. There's no group that's chanting, nothing like that. It's really just officers out here at this point. And there's a man who is in his car in the driver's seat who was surrounded by these 10 or so state troopers and they just got out of his car, they searched him, it looks like they're searching the vehicle. And we did see one man who did get ar arrested. He was on the ground on his lying prone and they handcuffed him behind his back or zip tied him at least. So we're just watching what's happening here now with this man who was sitting in his car. Obviously, it's past curfew. So now, he's, they're leading him away from his car. And now that the lights aren't so bright, maybe you can see how many officers really are standing in, this, in the courtyard on the street in front of these apartments. And I had that story earlier about how traumatizing this is for the families who live in these apartments around here. There's children inside. I haven't seen any tear gas yet tonight. Of course, we haven't been so up close to the police department this whole time, but heard a couple flashbangs. And we're gonna watch what happens with this man who's being led away from his car. But yeah, for now, the, the protest group looks small and we're, we're gonna hang here to see what develops. 